Hey, it's Mike here, and today, acrylamide. I'm finally doing a video on this after years of suggestions, and this is a probable carcinogen that forms during the high temperature cooking of certain foods, particularly potatoes, which I love, and a lot of you do too, so we gotta cover this. I first became aware of it eight-ish years ago, nine years ago now from Dr. Greger's video. And I figured, you know, he said a lot of great points. I don't really need to cover it, but it's been that long now. So I figure I can do an update on the newer research and just do a more in-depth look at it and try and take a level-headed look at the actual risk and some just amazing food science related ways that we can reduce it. But I had to ask questions like, is it just high in fried foods? What about say baking potatoes without oil, which is, you know, how I like to do it. Or what about other foods that have popped up associated with acrylamide like coffee and bread? How high can those get? So let's just get into it. And I have to say the reason that I'm doing this is because it was a topic that was asked about on Chef AJ's live interview that I was just on. And that was to talk about the ultimate vegan health and plant-based bundle. So we have another awesome bundle here, and this one in particular is more whole food, oil-free, and has 122 eBooks, presentations, video courses, slash classes, really, you know, nearly $6,500 worth of value for just 49 bucks. This just gets ridiculous. My eBook is also in it, but I got a late start, so this thing is done on Sunday at midnight, depending on your time zone, so just click my link below, and you can look at it and check that clock. And Chef AJ has a lot of people that eat McDougal-style starch-based diets. They're eating a lot of potatoes, so there is a lot of concern around this. So I figured I gotta cover it. Let's just get into the basics here. Acrylamide is interesting because it forms naturally, but then is also used from the American Cancer Society in a lot of industrial processes like plastic manufacturing, and then also forms in cigarette smoke. And I was not aware of how it was discovered in food, which is a really interesting story that brings us back to Sweden around the turn of the, the millennium, 2002, where they were building a tunnel and they used these sort of industrial sealants, polyacrylamide sealants that didn't cure properly. They leached into the groundwater and made cows sick. A Swedish researcher named Margareta Tornquist, hopefully I said that right, realized that it was not just high in the workers, but they were also detectable levels in people that were supposed to be the control group completely unconnected to that incident and then later realized and discovered it in food products. Now, potatoes are generally the highest concern source because they have two key ingredients. They have the amino acid asparagine and then they also can form glucose from that starch. And as you can see here from this organic chemistry flow chart, yeah, those are the precursors for acrylamide production. And they say plants don't have enough protein. But it's really worth mentioning that those potatoes have to be cooked at a high temperature. If you're talking about steaming, boiling, you know, wrapping a potato in aluminum foil and cooking it that way in a fire or something, or in a microwave, it's not gonna be forming. Let's play a game show. Which is more delicious, left or right? Yeah, you probably chose the darker browner one, which is more delicious, but higher in acrylamide, I'm sorry. Acrylamide is found in those points where there's browning which is of course what we all love, unfortunately. And so if you don't have that, you're very unlikely to have it. I have to wonder why are we instinctually drawn to that? Why does it taste so good? Maybe it's an indication of sterilization, I don't know. And that brings us to French fries and potato chips from this paper. Yeah, high concentrations of acrylamide have been found in both with French fries topping out around 2000 micrograms per kilogram and potato chips up around 4,000 potentially, though generally lower, and that they contribute over half of the total acrylamide intake in the Western diet of children. And just a side note, they can also form in sweet potato fries, but I've never seen them get above 450 there, so lower, but still concerning. As for other foods like coffee and wheat-based foods, I have just not seen them get anywhere near potatoes. So yeah, the main concern by far is potatoes. And yes, dietary intake of acrylamide is associated with higher blood levels. This 2020 Japanese study found just that, though the highest versus lowest estimated consumption only meant about a 30% increase in blood levels, the 95th percentile of non-smokers were still lower than the smoker's average acrylamide level. 
but not being as bad as a smoker's level is not the goal that we're all <laughs> aiming for. So we have to take a deeper look and see what the actual connection to cancer is here. What is the risk that we've found in the literature? So it is a probable carcinogen according to the WHO, a class 2A1. Back to this paper, yeah, California's Prop 65, which requires labeling of potentially carcinogenic products, uh, says that anything with an acrylamide level above 275 micrograms per kilogram needs to have a warning label. Although I do not believe that applies to the main place that people eat french fries is just rolling up to a restaurant and getting them. But this has led a lot of people to put potatoes or french fries on par in terms of risk with processed meat or meat in general. With this article actually pinning it against bacon, saying that it's a food that will kill you before bacon will. Okay, but I have to mention french fries are not yet listed as a carcinogen. However, bacon is also potatoes are not a carcinogen yet red meat is a class 2a carcinogen on its own and processed meats from the research kill an estimated 34,000 people globally a year from cancer. But from this paper, potatoes in general are not associated with an increased cancer risk. However, when they are cooked at higher temperatures, when we're talking about high fried potato intake, that is a 27% increased risk in cancer mortality. However, asking somebody how many French fries they eat is basically asking them how often do they eat out at fast food restaurants, which of course drive things like obesity, which is highly connected to cancer as well. And of course is an indicator for processed meat consumption as well. There's also other concerns like salt and of course various oils that could have negative health effects. So we have to ask how much is dietary acrylamide associated with cancer just on its own. And this is important because a lot of the determinations that it causes cancer were done from mouse studies where they gave really high doses and so that's been heavily criticized. But that brings me back to a study that Gregor cited back in 2014, which is this review. It showed association with cancers like kidney, endometrial, and ovarian. However, it criticizes the methods of estimating intake. However, that study is now approaching a decade old. And so we have to ask what are the new results and we have this paper that sums up a lot of them. So they say a 2020 meta-analysis concluded that dietary acrylamide was positively associated with endometrial and ovarian cancers and premenopausal breast cancer. However, a 2021 meta-analysis didn't see higher risks for those exact same cancers. Finally, another meta-analysis from 2021 looking at non-gynecological cancers found no association with dietary acrylamide intake. And since then, we've had another 2023 review, which again found this same thing, which is essentially mixed results. But if you're like me and there are mixed results for cancer risk on something that you could probably take a few steps and easily avoid, I say, why not lower it until we have more data? It just seems like the proper cautious thing to do, which means we need to start investigating what changes the level of acrylamide in these potatoes. And the first question I wanted to know the answer to was, does cooking at high temperatures without oil actually make any difference? Does baking versus frying actually help at all? Let's look. The first answers we can get are on baking versus frying, but unfortunately, generally, they are putting oil on the potatoes and then baking them, comparing that to frying. But we still have some good answers. From this study, baking and frying can actually beat out each other at different temperatures. If you bake them at 170 Celsius, which is 340 degrees Fahrenheit, they get higher than fried. But if you go up to 180 to 190, which we're talking about 355 to 375, then you are lower than fried. So ideal baking temp appears to be around 355 or 180 degrees Celsius. Sadly, my favorite temperature of 425 roasty blasting that good stuff is probably too high according to this chart. I believe that lands at around 220 Celsius. Not good. Thankfully, I'm too lazy to cut up French fries and take the time to bake them at high temperatures <laughs> to do that very often. And just theoretically, we have to think, would oil help here at all? Well, the Maillard reaction that's occurring between that protein and the glucose isn't technically involving the oil, doesn't need that to occur. So would it be just as bad with no oil? Well, I did actually find a study that compared various oils. They didn't find much of a difference between oils, but they have a bar for no oil, which is you know almost half as much. And if I had to guess why this is the case, it just has to do with oil being better at transferring that heat and helping that reaction along. And that is supported by this other study that found that baking with some steam involved 
creates more acrylamide than a dry ventilation baking that we would see in a convection oven or an air fryer. So half as much-ish, but that's still gonna be higher than virtually any other food that's not potato out there. It's still gonna be way higher than cooking with boiling or steaming or microwaving. So are there any ways to get that lower? And the good news is you might still be able to enjoy that super crunchy deliciousness without the acrylamide risk. So now let's look at ways to reduce acrylamide with food science. Well, first of all, there's breeding potatoes, just a lower sugar content will do it, but they actually bred a special potato that didn't brown and sort of turned whitish when you cooked it. Doesn't form acrylamide, however, lacking that golden brownness meant it had a low acceptance rate from people who were eating it. And here's a really cool one. Adding rosemary can lower the acrylamide formation by quite a bit in potatoes. From this one, we see with 0.3% rosemary added, 96% reduction in acrylamide formation. That is incredible. And that way there isn't sugar to have that Maillard reaction on the surface during cooking. It's amazing that people put rosemary on potatoes and I don't know how they would possibly know that this is a good thing, but looking to other spices, I thought maybe oregano. From this one, we can see that oregano and olive oil lowered it by about 50%, which is promising. And from this study, blanching or acid immersion reduced acrylamide by 99%, essentially wiping it out completely. Acid immersion sounds a little bit intimidating, but from this paper, just soaking potatoes in water for 15 minutes reduced acrylamide formation by two thirds, which is pretty awesome. And a one to three vinegar to water solution decreased it by 75%, solid. And then blanching, the definition is pretty open-ended. You know, on YouTube, you might see somebody blanching potatoes by just pre-cutting and boiling them for like three minutes but that study actually put them at sort of a low cooking temperature for 40 minutes, which is just way too much in my opinion. Thankfully from this study, blanching them for just six minutes in water that's, you know, just 80 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, just below boiling there, actually got rid of about two thirds as well. And this makes me wonder if my lazy process of putting cut potatoes in the Instant Pot for five minutes has a positive effect. I'm not sure, but thinking about the theory the behind cool this, I believe it actually is it's the sucking away the sugar from the that surface that's that just reaction. going into the water. In the end, we have some mixed results here from the epidemiology. We're having you know bad signals on certain cancers, but then we're having neutral signals on those same cancers in other studies. So we just need to keep researching this, but just the fact that there are those signals out there makes me go, hey, why not apply some of these things we know? First of all, just focusing on eating more of potatoes that aren't browned and cooked at high temperatures. But then when you are doing that, just implement some techniques like adding rosemary or blanching or pre-soaking in a vinegar solution. And then finally, not cooking potatoes with oil seems to reduce that acrylamide level by nearly half. And speaking of no oil, you have my cookbook, which has no oil in that bundle, which is linked down below with over a hundred resources, books, etc., on healthy vegan eating. And again, that ends on Sunday evening. So definitely check it out sooner than later. Hopefully it's not too late. And I hope you learned a lot about acrylamide. I learned a ton researching this video. So feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.